Hello and welcome to another talking guitar session at the North American Guitar in London. I'm Ben and I'm with my very good, very long standing friend, Mr. Will Manickel. Also, just want to squeeze in guitar aficionado. Sure, we can do that. I think we can do yeah, that. Yeah. Good to see you again, Ben. Good to see you, mate. <laughs> well, we spent a lot of time with each other this weekend. We certainly did, actually. It was great. Yes, so we had our very first TNAG workshop mm. with, with your fine self. Yes, that um, was really fabulous. I absolutely loved it, actually. It's been a wicked couple of days. It was amazing, wasn't it? And we had 10 students. 10 students, yeah, all in this wonderful showroom here. Kind of such a perfect space for it, as it turns yeah. out. And 10 was the perfect number. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a really, really lovely atmosphere throughout the whole weekend. It was great. Yeah. It was awesome. And you're definitely right. The 10 was the perfect number, wasn't it? Because it meant we got a nice little sort of semicircle of people. You were sort of here in the the stage area. That's right, and I think it's nice having that kind of number because it allows you to have a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time with people as well. It's yeah. kind of manageable over a weekend. Yeah. So everyone feels like they've got a bit more of a kind of a personal touch as well, which is always good. Yeah, lovely. So just for, for people that haven't been to a workshop before mm. uh, or uh, couldn't make this workshop, mm. just explain the kind of process. You know, we've got the booklet you can show, but just explain the process of how a workshop actually works. Sure, so um, the way that this workshop, um, I kind of decided to structure it was based around two set pieces, which we would um, kind of pull apart across the two days and I kind of put in uh, the pieces themselves and some warm-up exercises and little kind of tips and tricks into a little booklet that gets sent out in advance so people, if they want to, can have a little flick through beforehand but there's you know there's never any pressure to learn it all or anything like there's that. There's no cane. There's no, no there's no I left the cane at home okay. for this one. I right. thought you know the yeah. first one we'll ease it in. Um, but yeah it's just and you know two different pieces of differing styles and the whole idea is just to I don't know expose people to maybe some music uh, that they're not so used to playing, mm -hmm. uh, push people just ever so slightly out of maybe some comfort zones just to kind of give a bit of inspiration mm. because I remember when I was a student on workshops in the past, it was some of the most inspiring times I've ever had. You know, I was very lucky to go to it was the IGF summer school back in when it was over in Bath and, you know, tutored by a mutual friend, Stuart Ryan, yeah. you know, Thomas Lee, but I, I was kind of sat there just kind of picking all this stuff up. And those experiences were some of the ones that really inspired me to take guitar playing into a career. So mm. it, was, it can be a really lovely way and a very supportive way of kind of learning music. But I do understand that it can be quite intimidating if yeah. you haven't done one before. So it's always important, I think, to just make sure people are feeling at, at ease. I'm yeah. never putting anyone on the spot. Yeah. It's not the kind of thing where I say, okay, so just to get to solo. Know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is everyone plays it solo just to make sure everyone's feeling nice and relaxed. So just, it's not the way that I like doing things anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But it was so lovely, um, you know, coming here. I, I, I sort of get in, get all the biscuits ready. Biscuits were on point, by the way. Thank so. you so much. Yeah. Uh, you know, just making sure that when people arrived upstairs that they were able to have a sort of social area, or being by the canal is yeah. really lovely. Um, and uh, it was funny, as people arrive, you do see that sort of in their eyes, you do see that slight bit of nervousness. Yeah, sure. But then leaving you guys to it and then coming back in the evening to to crack open a bottle of Prosecco because we had a glass of Prosecco by the canal which was lovely mm. um, was just amazing that camaraderie and sense of community yeah it's lovely it's group, so actually. you just, you can just almost see the kind of ice melting between you, you know, yeah. nervousness going away and exactly it's a lovely social kind of environment and yeah. everyone's coming from a different musical background mm -hmm. and it's lovely just to see everyone kind of being inspired by everyone else in the group as well you know? yeah. so you get some people for example who are very good at learning from the page maybe they've come from a classical background and that's kind of part of the learning or maybe you get someone who's much better at learning by ear but not so confident reading mm. and you get that kind of mixture in the group and it's nice to see everyone supporting one another mm -hmm. uh, in that environment because everyone learns differently and it's Definitely. just interesting to see that but always really lovely and this space was perfect because obviously you know the showroom is really lovely to be in and then obviously having the canal and it was such a beautiful sunny weekend here yeah. and then the narrowboat pub just up the, up the road yeah, for yeah, a point yeah. in the evening was just spot on so yeah, yeah I really great. thoroughly enjoyed it and so do you, so do you find um, that's, that's a really good point I hadn't thought about that but obviously everybody is at different stages in their playing but um, how do you or do you very quickly see the players that are quick off the page and see the players that are quick with the ear and, and once you've kind of you know that do you then sort of hone in on 
not their weaknesses, but you know, helping them sort of get better at page learning, or do you sure. go round to yeah. each player? I think you have to be, a, you know, always have to be adaptive because mm-hmm. you know you never know until the day who you're going to have in the workshop, what their backgrounds are. You know, you know nothing. You know nothing. Where you know you could have like someone who's only been playing for a couple of years, someone yeah. who's been playing for twenty years. You know, it's, it's always very broad. But that's part of the fun, and that yeah. I, I like the fact that you know I get to kind of really think quite carefully about the material that I choose to do. So that you have material that is accessible for someone who hasn't been playing for, you know, all their life or something that, something that you can kind of get in. But then also material that has enough meat on the bone for someone who's, you know, got a little bit more technique down. Yeah. Perhaps can really kind of still get something from it and be pushed. Yeah. Um, and finding that balance is quite important. So... <laughs> Yeah, and then, then when you're in the workshop, you're getting to know the guys and how they're learning. And then, yeah, you do, you try and start just tweaking the way you're kind of like approaching it just to make sure that everyone is feeling like they're not completely out of their yeah. comfort zone and everyone is kind of being supported at the same level. So Yeah, it's yeah. brilliant, man, it's brilliant. And there was one thing that I thought was particularly great, um, which I hadn't thought of, um, but of course, you, you pair people up, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not just it's, yeah. you know, as a big group, it's quite nice to kind of split the group up if you want to do some slightly more focused work in just, in just pairs yeah. and one of the things we were working on was um, some you know work around improvisation mm-hmm. and we paired up and we could split the group around the showroom and upstairs by the canal it was so beautiful yeah. to be outside having a jam out there and it was um, a really really lovely space to work in but also a lovely way for people to you know have that experience of improvising with someone else because mm. that's actually something that not people really, not not yeah. get to do exactly exactly and yeah. it's a perfectly relaxed environment to do it I mean this is something that I really used to find quite nerve wracking when I was younger still sometimes kind of nerve wracking now but it's um, you know it's great if people haven't done much improvis- improvisation to do it in that relaxed way and yeah. some people may have done it a little bit some people haven't so it's, it's a nice way in anyway yeah, yeah. and having that partner that, that might be a little a little bit more advanced than you saying, hey, saying, oh yeah, if you do that, when I'm go here, you do this, and then they kind of, almost like that kind of band mentality yeah, yeah, exactly. sort of working together. Exactly. Um, there was a great video that you did, you showed me uh, mm. just before everybody left uh, of, of how you'd plonked people in different areas yes. around the showroom, and yeah, I thought yeah. it was so cool, you know, I probably would have tidied up the back room a little bit better. Someone's all playing with loads of boxes around them. wasn't quite what I would have wanted. But um, you know, you had some people in the main showroom, some mm. people in the, in the storeroom, some people by the canal, by the sofas, up mm. by the desks. Yeah. Um, and you know, when I saw that little clip, which we'll we'll add to this video, uh, it might be sped up, but mm. we'll, we'll pop it into this video. Um, yeah, it was great, and, and and for us at the North American Tower, it was so cool to see the space being utilised like that. So. Well, great! So I'm really happy. It's just it's nice to have um, a space that you can use in that way. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you don't have that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just have a room. Yeah. But here we have multiple rooms. Yeah. And a beautiful canal. Yeah. You know, I mean, come on. I wouldn't swim in it. But yeah, I probably wouldn't yeah. swim in it. But it's nice to be near. Yeah. And nice to play guitar next to. Yeah. It. So yeah, yeah. yeah so it was absolutely perfect. Really, really loved it. So hope we can kind of do it again sometime. Well, definitely. I mean, I know we were already talking about uh, potentially looking at booking some more stuff in. So, mm. uh, no, so definitely great. watch this space. Um, and also, if anybody has any ideas uh, for, for anything else that you'd like to contact Will about, you know, about sure. n- more workshops mm. or one-on-one stuff, then yeah. we'll pop Will's um, website details in the link uh, below. Great. I always point below and hoping that, the, that we will put the link below, but we, we will put the link below. Um, but yeah, no, so I really just from all of us here at the North American Guitar, thank you so much for helping us kick off the first North American Guitar Workshop. Oh, it's it, my pleasure. Thanks for having me to do it. Mate. Could not have really thought of anybody better than to do the first one with. Thanks, man. I appreciate that very much indeed. Well, see you soon, mate. Cheers, Ben. Thanks, mate. Uh, so for more information on the finest luthier-built instruments, please do subscribe to this channel. Uh, and for more information on Will McNichol and any future workshops, then please do get in touch.